Good afternoon and thank you for joining us and thank you Chief Constable Andy Mosh for joining, for joining me today. Um, I'm your Police and Crime Commissioner Sue Mount Stevens, and we're here to, to answer some of your questions, some of your concerns, um, because there has been changes. You know, we, we, many of us did watch um, the Prime Minister last Sunday announce well, I think what's been termed as baby steps to relaxation, uh, some of, some of the, um, the guidance. And, and I think that uh, going forward, I think it will, for some it will make difference, for others it's not going to. But you've only got to see uh, the increase of, of traffic on the roads to know that there are more people being out and about. Um, but I think we're going to have to live with certain restrictions for, for, for many months to come, because the virus hasn't gone away. Uh, and I think that that is uh, one of the things that we need to, 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 to remember. So before we start, uh, Andy, is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, this is a, 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 another step, I mm. think. The change in the regulations and guidance is another step in the right direction. Uh, but as you said uh, and implied so, the recovery from this crisis is a, is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And so uh, we th the role of the police has diminished. Mm -hmm. um, I, I spent the night absorbing the 50-page the um, document um, on next steps, the plan to re rebuild. Uh, of the 50-page document, there is actually only uh, 59 words about enforcement. So we, we are playing a supporting role in a public health crisis. But the fact that we've taken the next step, I think that we should, we should uh, be pleased that we're making progress. I think the important thing is that the plan to rebuild includes lots of guidance on how people should behave, and particularly around social distancing and interaction. And the point of that is to limit the spread of the virus from household to household. I think that we should do everything that we possibly can to encourage the public to comply with it, because if that is successful, we will take the next step, as the Prime Minister indicated, and which will see more relaxation and all of us able to do more of the things that we want to do sooner rather than later. But it's, it's very much an emphasis on, on moving it into our personal responsibility and it's, it's very much a health issue, isn't it? This, this is a, a public health crisis mm -hmm. and the like of which none of us have ever seen before. And I said right at the outset that we wouldn't police or enforce our way through this. Uh, the police have clearly got a role to play and we will and we'll talk some more about that no doubt so but we have also got a huge and a significant amount of our business as usual mm. um, tackling criminals of the most serious crime in public places in homes and uh, i can only see the the pace of that work regathering and accelerating over the coming weeks indeed okay so let's look at the um the, the changes to the role of, of the police so can you give us a, an update of how the changes are going to impact the police? So the, 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 the changes are, um, I think, significant in, in one respect. Uh, and uh, actually, the role of the police uh, has been, over the last six weeks, asking the question of people, uh, why are you not at home? Um, because actually, the, the advice was the regulations, you should stay at home unless. Mm -hmm. the, um, the regulations have been sufficiently relaxed to increase the amount of reasons why people may be out of, the, out of their home and in public spaces, um, work being a significant um, reason if you can't do your work from home. So our, our um, role around COVID, um, and we're still working to the four E's of you know, engage, explain, encourage before enforcement as a final option. Uh, our role about that has changed from being why are you out so much as who you with mm -hmm. and actually where, where we see uh, big groups of people who are together and interacting who are evidently not from the same household that's the sort of circumstance the police will be more drawn into uh, than simply uh, why are people away from their homes and is that that larger gathering that would be a breach then it would be a breach of regulations Pe people are allowed them to be a out of their homes for a, a, a very good number of reasons, mm -hmm. um, but, but actually it, if they're going to mix with other people, it's one person from a, a different household, um, and actually that, that one person should be maintaining a social distance two metres. And, and some of, the, some of the, um, the breaches are not going to be police enforceable in as much as it's, it's other, other partners, isn't it, like trading standards and things to look at? Yeah, if people, if people are running businesses in a way that they shouldn't, that's a trading standards issue. We, we clearly work in partnership with local authorities 
around that sort of enforcement. But much of the guidance in this document doesn't amount to a breach. Mm -hmm. I, I'll give you an example. If people are on public transport or in a place where it's difficult or impossible to maintain a social distance, then a actually the guidance is people should consider wearing uh, a, a mask. A mask. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, um, not wearing a mask is not something the police can take any enforcement action over. Um, li likewise, people are advised not to use public transport unless absolutely necessary, but that is not a police issue. Mm -hmm. so, so to be very clear about this, and it's important to manage public expectations, each and every one of us as private individuals have got a responsibility to do their best to comply with this so that we can move to the next stage and limit the spread of the virus. The police have got a very limited role around enforcement and limited powers of enforcement, which we, we will use as a last resort if necessary. But I would implore people um, wondering what their responsibility is um, over this next stage to understand the limitations of that responsibility and manage yourself responsibly. This is a collective effort that's needed by society now. So we would expect the number of, of, of the, those phone calls, those, those people who are reporting breaches, to reduce? I, I would hope that it will re reduce for two reasons actually Sue. What, one is I sincerely hope that the population um, take as much account of this advice as, and guidance mm -hmm. as possible um, because actually that's the way that the virus will be limited and um, let's have a little look back as we look forward. We've got a population in Avon and Somerset of almost 1.7 million people. We, we, we've only issued 322 enforcement tickets we, we are very confident the vast majority of our population, our communities, have behaved in a very responsible way and we would want to thank them for it. They've done a, a brilliant job. So one reason why we hope to have less is that we hope that people will be aware of their responsibilities and take their goodwill and participation um, forward, their social responsibility. The, the second reason that we, we would hope to have um, a, a lower number of breaches is, is actually there are many more reasons why people should be about. Mm. So actually a, a reason for calling the, the police is not that you see a group of cyclists come past your house. That, that, that wouldn't be a reason to ring the police. Yeah. Or there's people walking um, down a footpath near you. We, we, we have only got an enforcement role now where people are gathering in large groups between households. And we can travel further now to the, you know, we can go to beauty hotspots, we can go to the beach um, to, to, for exercise and to, for our own well-being. Yeah, it, it's clear that uh, the government have said that people are allowed to leave their homes uh, several times a day, not only for work. Um, what, one of the other things they can do is click and collect, mm -hmm. care for vulnerable people, um, buy food. So there's a variety of reasons why they might be out. But, but leaving home isn't just for exercise, they can leave home for other, other means of uh, their, their well-being, their, their health and well-being. And actually there is no limitation on how far they drive. But I, I, I think, again, this is a sensible advice as opposed to the law. Well, I think we would ask everyone to think responsibly about how far they drive and where they're going. Mm. If, if everybody goes to the same beauty spot, it probably will be difficult for the, the services to be maintained in that beauty spot in a way that allows people to comply with the guidance on um, social distancing. So we just have to be, I think all of us, thoughtful. But people can drive to exercise and recreate. I'm particularly delighted the garden centres are opening. Uh, that is a, a subject very close to my heart. And I suppose what we're, 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 we're saying, isn't it, that we, we, we have to take on the spirit of the guidance but it is the police will, will are there to enforce the regulations. And that, that there is that, that difference, isn't there? Yeah, I think, I think the, uh, the really important thing uh, to me from a policing point of view is, is that there is a personal responsibility about this guidance. And the only way that we're going to get through this is, everybody, is if everybody does their very best in the way that they already have to comply with that, that, that personal responsibility. So the police have got an ongoing, now more limited role um, where we feel that the regulations are being breached, not the guidance, the regulations, that's the law where we can issue a ticket, is to engage people, uh, explain to them what the law says and the, the guidance, encourage them to comply. Now, if actually, if people are blatantly disregarding our advice and encouragement, and then there is a role for enforcement and we won't hesitate to do that if that's made out. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. And I hope that that's, that's brought some, some clarity to some of the questions that, that, that you've asked. Um, 
We hope that we're going to have a sunny weekend um, and that we will all be able to um, be out and about and some of us will be in our gardens when we're lucky enough to have them. But if you have any questions that you'd like us to put forward to the, uh, the Chief Constable, then please, please contact me either on social media or on our website. So until next time, thank you.